heavyweight boxing fans, what's the deal? All right, man. So I just read an interesting report on stuff.co.nz. I'll leave that article in the comments section. You can click it, read it, come to your own surmise. But according to them and News Hub, they're saying that uh, Joseph Parker may end up facing Alex Leopold instead of Eric Molina June 30th in Rhode Island. At first, when I heard Parker was fighting in Rhode Island, I'm like, Rhode Island? What the hell? But then I looked to see who was headlining the card, and it's Demetrius Andrade, and he is from Rhode Island, so I get it now. A few of these DAZN cards have been in some obscure places, in my opinion. I understand that Andrade is from Rhode Island, but Rhode Island is not a hotbed for boxing. And they had another card where Jarrell Miller, I believe it was the, uh, was it the Denu fight? It was either when he fought Denu or when he fought Thomas Adamak. Uh, I think one of those cars were like in Kansas somewhere and neither of those places, man, no disrespect to those places, but they're not hotbeds for boxing. You know what I mean? But regardless of that, though, uh, according to these reports, it would not be Eric Molina. And in the article, they cited that it has something to do with contracts. All right. It's always about the contract, man, when fights don't get made. All right. So um, we'll see how this plays out. Uh there's been nothing from the teams that I've seen thus far that's made it official, but they're saying that Alex Leopold allegedly uh, could be the fill-in opponent if the Molina fight doesn't happen. Now, Alex Leopold, um, former title challenger to Klitschko back in the day, I believe they fought like in 2014 or something like that. I know he dropped one to Malik Scott. I know he lost to Kevin Johnson, but he had like a rough patch where he lost three in a row, Leopold did, where he lost to uh, Klitschko. Uh, Malik Scott and Manuel Char, all right, and then 2015 and now he's only fought what uh, three journeyman level fights, you know. What I mean, he's 39 years old, smaller heavyweight as far as his height. He does have a good left hook. I've seen him come back against uh, uh who, who did he fight? Travis Walker when he was getting beaten that fight, tired and gassed, and came back, landed a big left hook, and then landed a series of overhand rights to get the finish in that fight. Um, Leah Pye, when I last heard of him, man, he was supposed to fight Nathan Gorman the end of last year, and he ended up pulling out of that fight. Gorman ended up facing um, Joseph Parker, uh, sparring partner, Razvan Kanjanu, all right? So when he was going to fight, which I thought he probably would have lost that fight as well to Gorman, he pulled out, and I'm not sure why he pulled out that fight. But uh, Leah Pye, you know, six foot heavyweight. 200 and you know 45 pound 40 pound guy wants to land a big left hook put the high guard up wants to get close get in your chest and just land hooks and uppercuts and overhand rights that's pretty much his game plan i've seen him get winded in his last few competitive fights um and kind of just sit on the outside and be a plotter to some degree i think parker can pick him off although parker doesn't have a huge reach he can still pick him off and use his speed from the outside Parker has good legs, good upper body movement, in my opinion. Get him tired the first couple rounds, like literally the first one or two rounds, maybe three, and then just pick him apart and turn into a bulldog. Stay away from that left hook, though. You know what I mean? Be careful when you train left hooks. Parker has a good snapping left hook that he likes to use, but he uses his left hook more in combination form where he'll throw the one, two, three, and end the three off with a big left hook, whereas Leah Pai, literally high guard, high guard, then he'll just come up with swarming left hooks a la David Tua, although Tua was much more effective with his left hook. But he comes out of that type of style, you know what I mean, where he tries to fight that type of way. Um, but he lets his chin hang over his left foot at times when he's uh, tired with the high guard. Could be susceptible to uppercuts. I can see a, a right uppercut left hook possibly hurting him or finishing him off in his fight. But hey, man, uh, this is boxing. You have a puncher's chance. He's the older fighter, man. Um by 10 plus years on uh, Joseph Parker. Now, Leah Pye did an interview. It's on YouTube about a couple, about a year or so ago, man, where he was saying he's coming for Parker and he's coming for Lucas Brown. All right. So he has his opportunity. If this fight uh, comes to fruition, Leah Pye has his opportunity, much older fighter. It'd be a huge upset, but we will see what's going to happen, man, whether it's going to be Leah Pye or Eric Molina. I'm just getting the reports out there that, uh, there is a situation happening allegedly with the, uh, contracts with Molina um, right now. So, hey, man, you guys read the article. Take it for what it's worth. Let me know what you think in the comments section. What do you think about Parker against Molina or if Leah Pye steps in? What do you think about that fight, man? Looking at this in hindsight, though, man, I just did a video because um, I know Chisura and Parker were kind of negotiating with each, other, with each other a few months back here. And I know Higgins, when I heard him talk about that Chisura fight, 
that uh, this was before Chisura fought Sanaa Gashi. It was leading up into that fight. He was saying that, according to Higgins, he wanted to be treated fairly with negotiations with the possible Chisura fight. And they're talking about possibly fighting around this time in July. And I think that would have been a great fight added to that Revis versus White. But instead, what's going to be added to Revis versus White is Chisura versus Spilka. All right. Really would have rather seen Parker versus Chis uh, Chisura, especially at the 0-2 Maybe if Parker won the fight, he could have, you know, uh, Parker really doesn't do this a lot, but he could have, you know, possibly try to call out Dillian White for a rematch or, you know, just throw some names out there. The UK is going to be buzzing for that fight for White versus Revis. And I think it just would have been a better look for Parker. But hey, man, he's fighting on the undercard in Rhode Island. Uh, at least he's getting some work in. I did see him in sparring. I seen that he's getting some good work in. I seen Tyson Fury join, join his camp in his preparation for Tom Schwartz. We came to the gym and worked out. A few, I think, I don't know if he worked out a few sessions with Parker or was it just that day for just some camera attention, but he was uh, working with Parker, even if it was just a day, man, to see how another champion prepares or got it, you know, used to hold the titles prepares. Um, it's always good to, you know, bounce ideas off each other and learn from guys. Um, then I seen Parker in training with uh, Malik Scott and Tony Yoka out there in Vegas. So he's getting some good work, man. You guys let me stay in the comment section. I'm gone.